Ian Ruru, uh, Te Aitanga Maha ki Ngai Tai uh, Waka Tō i Ngāti Parau uh, as a Principal Māori Scientist at MFE uh, and a member of the Sustainable Seas Kahui Māori. Uh, he's a Director on Te Wai Māori Trust and a recent Crown appointed member on the National Water Services Regulator Taumata Arawai. Uh, Ian is a practitioner of applying tikanga-based approaches to natural re resource management and has supported several iwi and hapu utilising the Modi Compass uh, to support their submissions and regulatory decision making. Uh, nō reira, uh, nō mātou te whiwhi uh, i te tuakana, nō reira, nō mai ki te ata mira i ruru. I try to be serious, but <laughs> thanks for the intro there. Um, um, Maro mai te Mauri Nuku, Maro mai te Mauri Rangi, ko te Mauri Kea Hau e Mauri Tipua, ka pakuru mai te Pō. Tau mai te Mauri, hau mi e hui e taike. Yeah, thanks for the intro. Uh, might have the attend guitar session later on after, after, after this, but um, uh, back to business. So, yes, so, yeah, surprisingly, it's not a picture of a tuna or eel. Um, I managed to find a, uh, something marine-based. So this uh, takes me back to when I was doing my Master of Science uh, thesis through the University of Waikato. And uh, luckily for us, back in Gisborne, Gisborne Harbour is the largest nursery for juvenile rock lobster. And my master's thesis wasn't on biology, it was actually on technology innovation. So taking something from idea through to commercialisation and trying to understand the you know, pro, uh, pitfalls and pros and cons of that process. So we have this beautiful resource uh, in the Gisborne Harbour, and my thesis was to look at why, was one, one of the topics was why, um, how, how to on grow them, how to make yeah, um, a sort of business venture and enhancement opportunities. So we got to the question of why. So um, my father and I and a couple of other uh, researchers, we thought that um, sound might have been an attractant because for the Gisborne Harbour, they have to swim against the current to get in there, and they come in at winter, so so one of the theories was uh, sound was, was bringing them. So we had um, we had speakers set up in, in the water, and we're playing different types of music. C crazy looking back in the 90s, but we're playing Mozart and um, and Metallica, <laughs> trying to work out if one of those sort of um, genres would be attracting them in, into the harbour. So yeah, we did. Yeah, so uh, after uh, um, tens of dollars and hundreds of hours of volunteer time, we couldn't work out the um, the process, so uh, so couldn't nut that one out. It wasn't until sort of a couple of years down the line that my father, who was doing all the real work and I was just sort of uh, talking about it, he came up and he said, uh, have you thought about Modi? I said, oh, no, nah, I haven't thought about it at all, because like, Bunsen burners, white lab coat, Modi wasn't even on, the, um, on my radar. And then he talked about the, um, one of the stories of the Taki Timu Waka. Uh, one, one of the accounts was uh, on their way sort of voyaging around um, Aotearoa, they came into the harbour, Tuiranga Nui Akiwa, and um, one of the chief scientists of the waka, Rua Faro, planted a Modi stone at the entrance to the Kupu of Whakapata stream, which is now the Gisborne Harbour, and that Modi stone was to attract or look after the kaura. So this is a quarter that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, but um, took the sort of the Western science aspects, we couldn't nut it out, but then your dad came up and sort of shared some of the pakaro from home, um, from, from our uh, tipuna. I said, well, that's, that's awesome. He sort of could have told us a lot. I asked him why he didn't tell, tell me earlier, why do we have to go through all the trials and tribulations of listening to Mozart and the Talica and things, and it, uh, he, he said, oh, you had to work it out yourself, had to cut, go through that journey. And it relates back to um, our Fenona from Tuhoi when she talks about the... Um, the tea towel process. You have to do the time before we can sort of graduate through, and I'm still doing that uh, on that journey of the tea towel. So, um, yeah, so that was sort of the, so I'm trying to explain the the two worlds, Western science, my and Māori, and how you can walk within the, between those two worlds and sort of draw on the best from both. They can work and um, work together. So that sort of started the, the journey of um, science, sciences and um, 
CODA, looking after enhancing the um, natural resource of the population of CODA. And we moved on into uh, Tuna, which connects us up with um, uh, Matua Tamiri and our um, journey through um, Kaipara Harbour and all the uh, awesome um, marae and that we head through um, Tamiri's uh, part of the world and sort of then uh, venture on into uh, leases through Tuai, Tuai Māori Trust and Tuhu Kaimwana. So we've done a lot of um, noho marae and learning about Māori from the locals, the tangata whenua at place. So uh, that was sort of that, that the cool journey, of, a very privileged journey to be able to sort of work, walk in both worlds and try and understand or contextualise, operationalise the whole thing about Modi and looking after the Modi of our waterways. So, yeah, that was um, part of the journey. Uh, just to, f oh, it's going red. Um, just, just, to, just to finish, um, finish up. I just really like to acknowledge, well, you, you all and all the mahi you're doing for our our, our seas, our, our moana, tangaroa, but also all our ringaropa, our um, tea towel holders that are holding the holding the line, our ahi car back back in our. Um, on our, on our coast. Uh, it's a real privilege to be able to help, help our whānau and I'm really looking forward to all the, um, the real deal stories that are coming up in the next session because, yeah, there's stuff you can't Google. There's people coming that are actually living, living the theory and, uh, yeah, it's just awesome to be here. Awesome to see you guys and, yeah, we'll get the guitar out a bit later. Nō reira, kia ora koutou.